Welcome back to Loudon, New Hampshire for the NASCAR Bush Series 200 presented by AT&T Unlimited. It's set to go. We're going to go trackside. Welcome back to Loudon, New Hampshire. Here's the STP starting grid for today's race. Shane Meal, fourth pole by a rookie this year. Bobby Hamilton Jr., first front row starting over a season. Todd Bodine right up there with Jason Keller looking for back-to-back -back wins. Veteran Randy LaJoy, this is home track now. Greg Biffle. Stacy Compton with a good effort. Kenny Wallace, the 91 winner here. It was 300 laps then. Scott Riggs, the rookie already has two wins in Ashton Lewis career, best second last week. Kevin Grubb got his first top 10 of the season last week at Richmond. And uh, Jack Sprague was last year's Truck Series winner here. Martin Truex Jr. doing the doubleheader, the Bush and the Bush North race that will follow today that you'll see one of those Monday nights on Speed Channel. And Ron Hornaday Jr. taking over from Lyndon Amick. And look back through the rest of this field. 41 cars are here, short of a full field and several fillers at the back. Casey Mears in the 66 car. He will have to move to the rear of the field. Made that engine change this morning. Was running hot in practice yesterday. David Green uh, subbing back behind the wheel. His ninth race here. Maine's Joe Bessie. First Bush Series start since he finished second here last year. Andy Santer, a favorite in the Bush North Series. Johnny Sauter making uh, his first New Hampshire start. Jimmy Kitchens had that good run at Talladega two or three weeks ago in Jimmy Means' car. These are all provisional here, starting with uh, Brian Weber and Troy Klein. Mike Johnson again from the Bush North Series, doing double duty. And Jeff Spraker, longtime Bush North competitor, worked with you at... Uh, and Martin's a good friend of Darrell Walters. Yep. So. so here's our Lotrimon race analysis. 41 cars will start today's race. The field you see amended from 43 to 41. And at 85 to 95 laps, we predict. I know we think we always get stuck on that right there, but trust me, track position is so important. A few teams this morning in the garage area said, you know, we may, with enough cautions, we may can do this race on one stop around lap 100. Never say never when it comes to fuel miles, right, Larry? Absolutely not. An optimistic 60 degrees today. No rain in the forecast, clear blue sky. I was going to say, this is what we like right here. Sunny. <laughs> we, we like that part, especially on Mother's Day Saturday. That's right. Race analysis brought to you. We're going to be set to go for 200 laps. Originally, this race was a 300-mile test for the Bush Series. Later amended to 200 miles. Shane Meal, Bobby Hamilton, Jr. to start up front. Bringing it down slow, green flag. Jay Green, they bring him up through the gears and head off into turn one. Jason Keller in the 57 car get to the bottom of the racetrack real quick. Greg Biffle in the 60 car, though, looks like he's going to get you trapped on the outside. Hamilton hits the gas. He's got a challenge for the lead. Good drag race. They touch right there as they turn off into turn three. Right now, these drivers still a little unsure about whoa, it. Whoa, Look whoa, at a wham. <laughs> I was just saying, they're unsure about these inches in these corners with that different transition. And look at this knot further back. Now, that's Martin Truex Jr. in the number one. Not Jimmy Spencer, who's taking the weekend off. Hank Jr., our guest commentator last night, up on the outside of Jamie McMurray. Jay Sauter. Caution is out. Caution is out. Boy, it didn't take long. Back to New Hampshire. Look way over here on the right side of your screen, and you'll see Brian Weber spinning into view. Yeah, Mike, I just happened to be looking down toward, toward turn two, and he just got away from me right there. Got up out of the group just a little bit, and around she came. Oh, we got trouble right there on the front straightaway. Kenny Wallace is around. Ashton oh, Lewis Jr., 46 cars into him. No caution flag yet. Everybody's going, but, boy, that was jammed up big time there for a second. Somebody missed a shift on that one right there. I tell you that right now. It's the front nose of his car. Got hard into the back of someone when all that happened from the Johnsonville camera. On board Compton. And uh, Jason Keller stove in the nose of his car as well. All kicked in against the tire. Uh, well, I don't know. That's, that's not Fender. All kicked in against the tire. Uh, 
Well, I don't know. That's that's not that don't look good. He's gonna have to get on the pit road and get that fender pulled off. Boy, look, there's Stacy Compton's problems right there, the 59 car. Let's see what happened here on this restart. Coming down to the green flag. Oh, right there. It wasn't that Lewis didn't get going on the restart. Somebody ran into somebody, and it all backed up from there. And these guys restart normally, I think, in second gear here, so you got to go from second, third to fourth as you get up to speed. And uh, if you miss a shift or don't go as quick as someone, especially in a single-file restart that early in the race. Stacey Compton and Jason Keller stay out there with damage to the front ends of their car. See them changing right side tires. The tire rule here today is you can change two sets under caution. You can change as many as you want under green. So this will not count against his two sets. Kevin Grubb to the inside of LaJoy. They touch. Here goes Scott Riggs. Jay Sauter as well in the 21 car. Nifty move by Riggs to take advantage. Got to set him up where you can. They still got Kevin set up there on the high side. Huh? Trying to score some more of those championship points. Everybody runs for him. David Green driving the 31 car. He's on pit road. A little slow in the back stretch. Uh, that is uh, the backup car for Greg Biffle's team. Right here, Shane Meal trying to hold off the advances of Jay Sauter and the point standing runner up, Jack Spray. Talk about the Craftsman Truck Series. Jay Sauter won a truck race here two or three years ago. Driving for Richard Childress as well. Jack Sprague won one last year. Jack Sprague sitting there, he's second the points, and Jason Keller, the points leader behind the wall. Jack Sprague, one of only three drivers that has no DNFs in 2002, which would also include Stacey Compton and Jason Keller. Both of whom have damaged race cars at present. Now Sprague is only 34 points away from retaking the lead. And with the attrition as high as it is, there's a good chance he'll do that today, even if he goes no further than halfway. Now, Keller's car is still being worked on behind the wall. Uh, the hood up and a lot of repair ongoing for Jason Keller. But for Bobby Hamlet Jr., he's just picking up right where he left off at Nashville. At, uh, gosh, Nashville. At Richmond. That was a while ago. <laughs> yeah, I mean, let 100. At Richmond last week. <laughs> let 159 laps. Didn't look like anybody was going to catch him. Fred Winky, they made that call to stay out. But once again, the motor did not blow on this race car, and he did not run out of fuel. He just was not picking up all that was right. available there. There were still two or three gallons in that fuel cell. A little bit more of that story. St. Louis and Test, Jerry said, I don't know why he says, I'm nervous. I don't have that on my video. Ring. NASCAR officials had a sharp look over that car after that happened. Yeah, what it did, it, it broke one of the U-boats that holds the rear end in place on the trailing arm. And what they found after further investigating is that U-boat had actually been drilled out, which is not legal, and uh, unfortunately, crew chief Mark Reno was fine this past week. So it's Hamilton, Biffle, Bodine, McMurray holds on to fourth, and Randy LaJoy has moved up to fifth. So let's show you that change for second place. It's a little bit like what Jeff Burton said earlier. He was able to get his nose down underneath Todd Bodine right there in the middle of that corner and make the pass. And Todd Bodine saw that Biffle was a little bit quicker, and he just rolled out of the throttle earlier, getting out in turn one, let Biffle go ahead. No sense in pushing the envelope here fourth of the way through this race. And uh, let me correct myself. Phil Bonnefeld's car was painted a mirror image of Greg Biffle's, but a different sponsor, different make. Those were not team cars. Sorry, Phil. Now, in the ongoing grudge between the Hollywood Hotel and the NASCAR on Fox pit crew, Jeff Hammond scored a big one for the hotel last night with his win in the Canaan Coops. But Dick Bergeron is going to enlist some support for his side. Well, I'll tell you what, we are ready to join the Marines. You can see Scott Wimmer in a 23 car, but he's picking him up laying down because Scott Wimmer is in the 21st position. And one thing I'd like to add right here, Larry, is that when you say something like that, that's one thing I think Bobby Hamilton Jr. has improved upon since a year ago. A year ago, at this time, he was like 20th in the point position. This year, he's up to 10th. That's an improvement of 10 positions. So that tells you. New leader at Loudon, Greg Biffle has passed Bobby Hamilton Jr. to become the third different leader of the day. Shane Meal at 11 laps. Hamilton for 61. And then this. 
And what really enabled Greg Biffle in the 60 to catch Bobby Hamilton Jr. was lap traffic. They've been falling for about eight or ten laps. But right, look, I'm, we've not seen anybody be able to run that low as Greg Biffle in the 60 car when he needs to. Now, again, we talk about what crew chiefs say. I was talking to Randy Goss, and he said, I'm going to tell you something about Biffle. Greg Biffle goes up in smoke. No caution. New leader. Caution is out now. They looked at the racetrack, decided there he did put some oil down, so we have a caution here on lap 76. Larry, that caution is going to make a lot of crew chiefs happy. Oh, yes, it will. Yes, it will. I mean, we've got uh, Scott Wimmer, Casey Mears, a lot of those guys, Shane Hall, just about to go a lap down. Fourth place. Next Saturday night on FX, Stock Car Racing's All-Star Tilt, the Winston. If you log on to NASCAR.com, you can pick the pack. For the second year in a row, fans can go online and determine the running order for the final segment of the Winston. Go to NASCAR.com, look for Pick the Pack, and cast your vote now. And I can't uh, 27 cars, 90 laps. I mean, the winner taking $750,000. <laughs> Three quarters of a million dollars. Boy, it's going to be awesome under the lights. Uh, and, and I like, I love this go fast or go home format no sandbagging oh no uh, no strategy here it's all flat to the floor get at it how does daryl say it it's all boogity 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 time baby all three seconds need to document that our points they've stopped hamilton is going to have to have adjustments made to his car on that stop the car is running a bit loose he has been told on the radio take care of the right front he's still got a fair bit of racing to go and all day long repeatedly they have told him take care of your fenders I've already bent one of those things in on number 25, Hamilton Jr. 79 laps, including one more pit stop to go. Yeah, I mean, the worst feeling in the world for a pit crew is to give up that much time on pit road and lose that many positions. The greatest feeling is you've overcome it here. You're back up there battling for the lead. As you said, Jeff, there's another chance to redeem ourselves here. One more stop to go. But as a good coach would do, Craig Wonky got down there and route off. Jay Sauter in trouble. Smoke from the left side of the car, no caution. And he was running in the ninth position. It's really going to hurt him today. But Larry, we go back and we talk about this racetrack. So that caution is out for Jay Sauter, who had fluid coming out of his car. It happens at lap 131. And I think it's safe to say that when this, this will take strategy out of the race. We're here with about 69 laps to go. It's been about 40 or 50 laps since everybody was on pit road. Come to pit road, get your four tires, fill it up with fuel. You can go to the end from here. And don't make any mistakes. No mistakes. And all the eyes right now will be on the 25 car to see whether or not they can get Bobby Hamilton Jr. off pit road with no problems this time and maintain this lead. And don't be surprised if you don't see maybe some of the cars running at the back, further back on the lead lap. It may take two tires to get that track position. Matt? Well, Jack Sprague is reporting in that his car is a loose on entry, but not that bad of a loose entry. The car is, though, tight in the center. He does like the car in long runs, so they're not going to make any adjustments. Just four tires are going to pack that fuel cell full of fuel to Dick Bergeron. Bobby Hamilton Jr. pits out of the lead. He had a bad pit stop the last time around. One round of wedge out of the right rear of the car. Crew on the left side. They're going to be beat down a pit road by Scott Riggs, number 10. This is a four tire chase. They're going to be beat by Todd Bodai. Hamilton goes out third and fourth. Jeff Scott Riggs in the 10 car. He won the battle off pit road, but he did. Green flag to restart the Bush 200 on FX, presented by AT&T Unlimited. And Scott Riggs, who took on two tires, goes way up the racetrack and loses the lead. And I would say what well, that's a product of, possibly, unless he has another problem. He maybe had buildup of, of debris, rubber and stuff on his left side tires, because remember, they've been on there for 50 laps. Very hot pick up all that trash. He's very lucky he didn't get in that outside wall. And the left sides really look good. You can still see the mold mark. Let's check with Matt. Mike down here, Mike McLaughlin's pit is pretty Timmy shut. You took four tires. How is that 18 car? Today we've just been a little bit tight, late exit. Uh, we should be pretty good, good to go here. Put a little bit more stagger in that last set. And made just a little bit of air pressure adjustment. They say this is magic mile. We'll see what kind of magic they have to here for us today. Mike's looking for his second Bush Series win here. He won here in 97. Timmy shut looking for his second career Bush Series victory this afternoon. Laughlin third, Jack Sprague is fourth, McMurray fifth, Riggs slid back to sixth, 
after the restart, and Randy LaJoy seventh. Hamilton is back at 15th. He's passed a bunch of cars, and uh, Larry, Larry, he's been taking no prisoners. Well, I mean, front. the thing about it, we heard him talk. He, he's the last. He was the last car on the lead lap at that restart. It was 17th with all the lap cars. That's like restarting 34th. That's 34 cars you have to pass. I'm just not sure if you can get there in the shorter distance we have to go. Well, look how he was trying to do it here. In, in the back straightaway. Underneath Hornaday, who went underneath Purvis, who almost climbed over Tim Sauter. <laughs> but Bobby Hamilton Jr., he saw that was not going to work right there. Right. Three wide will not work on the end of the turn three. Not enough racetrack. Again, showing the line back to the front. Hornaday just went up there and uh, hip-checked Purvis for 14th place. He goes by Ricky Hendrick in the five car right there, Bobby Hamilton Jr. You know, he's having a good run here. He's sitting back in the 12th spot. Started 25th, remember, last week at Richmond was his first race back since the injuries at Las Vegas. And we had the 48 car, Kenny Wallace, coming down pit road. Sure, that's an unexpected uh, stop right there. Yeah, he got back to the lead lap. And Kerry Earnhardt had uh, a strong run early in the going. Now he's gone two laps down there at 19 on the inside. Meanwhile, Riggs and Randy LaJoy continue to battle it out for sixth place. Dick? LaJoy had a really tough pit stop, Mike. He came in third. He went out in the seventh spot. The problem was with the rear tire. One of the rear tires hung up. Meanwhile, one of his gas guys got fuel in his eyes. So a tough, tough pit stop for LaJoy. Going into turn one on the outside of other cars. Got up in the marbles and into the fence. Caution is out at lap 145. Fourth caution of the day. The five of Hendrick. Just entered that corner a little bit too high, I believe, Jeff, up there where there's no grip. No grip right that part right there. Not a lot of damage. Ricky was able to drive it away. Boys trivia. Which active Bush Series track has hosted the most races without a repeat winner? Uh-oh. If you were with us at the top of the show, you know. Loud New Hampshire. Now, there are 15 different winners in 15 races. Who are the five that are in today's race? Oh, yeah, you're really throwing us a curve. Well, we, we know, know Jason one. Keller's won. He won Kenny last Wallace. year. Kenny Wallace. Jeff won. Burton, we talked about him earlier. Randy LaJoy, we talked about him. We're missing him. Kenny Wallace. You said him. I said the same. Yeah. I said Kenny, Kenny Wallace. Wallace. Mike McLaughlin. Mike yeah. McLaughlin. Magic Shoes. Five different prior winners in this race, which has never had a repeat winner. That's pretty phenomenal when you think. Let's take another look at what happened to Bobby Hamilton Jr. on his pit stop that has now got him in 12th place. Now watch the left rear. That's where the problem was. I, was it the left rear tire changer tire carrier who raised a hand? There's Fred Wanky's reaction. Raised a hand, went back to it, and the Jackman may have seen that hand raise as a signal to drop it. He might have been, but I've always told anybody who's ever jacked a race car, always see what you're supposed to see. You've got to make sure you see it, uh, Mike, because it's that important. The Jackman starts to stop, he ends the stop as we get ready to come back to green. Good point from a former champion Jackman as well as crew chief. It's on the Jackman's shoulders, though. That's that's the signal. He, when he drops the car, the driver did his job. He left. That's right. He did his job. And Shane Bell's doing his job as they go off through turn number one, and he leads them down the back straightaway. And Jeff, you pointed out, I think, maybe actually while we were breaking, the real benefactor of that caution was Bobby Hamilton Jr. Let him catch up to the group because those leaders were getting away from him with him stuck back in the pack. Right, you know, so he restarts 12th, which, like you said, is like starting 23rd with all of the lap cars on the inside. So he gained about 10 positions because of that uh, caution flag right there. He got him a little bit closer where he can see the leaders. I think more than his way through this lap traffic, he might get an opportunity to get a chance to get to them boys before the end of the day. Right now, Hamilton is 15th in line, which includes three lap cars. So he's 12th in the race, 15th in line. Once he clears, Kerry Earnhardt should have a chance to make some moves if the car is still capable. Meanwhile, out front, Shane Meal trying to distance himself from the race track remains Hamilton, who has climbed to 10. He's a little over four seconds behind leader Shane Meal. Uh, climbed to, let's see, ninth. Ninth. As he passes Kevin Grove. Biggest thing that Bobby Hamilton Jr. can hope for is that Shane Meal 
Todd Bernard to get up there and get to racing one another to allow him to get by some of these other cars to get to them. Otherwise, it may be his day may be already over. Well, I believe that's fixing to happen, Jeff, because Todd Bodine in the 92, he's right on the rear bumper. That leader, Shane Mill, and Mike McLaughlin in the 18 car, he's watching what's driving like a man who's mad. And he should be. But not at Jamie McMurray. No, not at Jamie McMurray, but uh, this is just called, I've got the best race car here. There's 33 laps to go, and I know if I can get to the front, I can win this race. Nothing, no, pilot get off in the corner. But that thing rolls to the middle, and he's able to pick that throttle up and go to the, down the straightaway so good. He really is, and this is right where, the once again, a crew chief and a spotter need to coach him a little bit. He's got a lot of good race cars in front of him, and he needs to be careful to try to keep the nose on that car and not get caught up in somebody else's mistake. Hamilton's 25, got past Randy LaJoy fairly easily, but now he's up against one of the best door slammers in NASCAR, Jack, Jack Spray in that 24 car. But he's got position once again, guys. So now, if he can beat him down in that corner, this is where it's going to get interesting. E Slam. <laughs> Poor Randy LaJoy tried to go on. Hard to believe here at Loudon. 16 laps to go, but Bobby Hamilton Jr., after coming from the back twice, has fought his way to third. Here's how he got past Mike McLaughlin. McLaughlin battled with Todd Bodine and then got up high. And Hamilton underneath. A little trade of paint. And that's the old eight tires is better than four routine right there. You go down in the corner. And they will turn it back down and come off turn two. And now he's after Ty Bodine and he slips underneath Bodine entering turn three. And goes after Shane Meal. Got 15 laps to go, 14 laps this time by. I believe Shane's going to have his hands full now with Bobby Hamilton Jr. to finish that car again. And one thing we've been noticing about, again, about Bobby Hamilton Jr., when he gets here, he just, I mean, he gets it to bite up off the corner. He gets position on Shane. Down the back straightaways, we had a turn three. The first restart, he was 36th in line. On the last one, he took the green flag 23rd in line. And he has fought his way to the lead, despite two bad miscues on pit road. Just need to show a little bit of patience right there, Mike, because his car, look here, plenty good to get off the corner and get by these guys. And just making it look easy. This car is really working well. 12 to go, spray. They're really the, starting to really take over now with Mike McLaughlin on four tires, Randy Joy on four, but I still go along with the call those made. Jerry Kennan made that call. The kid led the race for a long time. It, it was not out of it, you know, by no means. No, I think he probably learned something. I mean, he's been about 10 laps of making that whole deal work the way he wanted it to, but he's starting to have a little bit of trouble keeping that car on the bottom like he wants. Finishing for us, nothing to be ashamed of. He got to the pole here, second one, and right now looking for a fourth place finish. Five to go for Bobby Hamilton, Jr. He's catching still a bunch of lap traffic, though. It's just running quite a bit slower than his pace he's keeping right now. But he's pulled out to almost a two-second lead over Todd Bodine. Definitely doesn't need to be pushing it when it comes to these lap cars. They seem like they're working with him quite well. Shane Hall pulls over and lets the 25 car go by. He ran a 29.78 that time, passing two cars. Taking no <laughs> prisoners and taking no chances. Four to go. Next Sunday, the Bush Series moves to Nazareth, Pennsylvania. You'll see that on FX. And then they come back to Lowe's Motor Speedway to finish off the month of May. to go. It had to give Bobby quite a boost last Friday night to know that he had a car that, I hate to keep saying, but it's such a so true in racing so often, coulda, woulda, shoulda won that race. I mean, that's the thing about our sport, unlock a, a lot of sports. It's not over until that checkered flag waves. I mean, it don't matter how big of a lead you've had, how many laps you've led, it's not over until it's over. A lot of things can happen to these race cars. But the best thing about last Saturday night or Friday night is the fact that this young man's confidence probably hit an all-time high. And he came here, and right now it looks like he's on the verge of putting the period on the fact that, hey, boys, I'm real. Two to go. Sure what the longest in racing is, but this has got to be close. White flag. Well, we're 
about a, a mile away from being 16 winners in That's 16 right. races. He could pretty much just ride behind these guys right here. I mean, he has a two and a half second lead over Todd Bodine. He climbed from the tail end of the field after a miscue on the first pit stop. He climbed from the tail end of the field, 23rd on the restart in line, all the way to the lead. He started outside pole, and in his 96 start, Bobby Hamilton Jr. is a Bush Series winner. And the Marines have landed. Yes, they have. And there's plenty of them here to help celebrate. I'm telling you, Ronnie, that's the best thing about it is they've got some actual members of the uh, United States Marine Corps. You can see right there the jubilation. That, that this thing is over with, guys. It's great to have the first victory. He joined Scott Riggs as first-time winners in 2002. And he's the second first-time winner here at Loudoun. Eric Cope in 1994 got his first Bush win at this speedway. Seventh different winner this season. Well, Dick, Dick Bergren. And the winning. Bobby Hamilton Jr. celebrates here at New Hampshire. After standing on the windowsill of his car and saluting the fans with a Marine flag in hand, he's now made it to victory lane. Matt's there. And he leaps off the, the door into a mosh pit of Marines. Bobby Jr., the Marines certainly earned your salute with the flag, and you certainly earned this win today. Well, I tell you, Fred, <laughs> it's, my, it's my baby. My Fred, uh, Fred Wanky, he is the man. He got this thing dialed in where he's a little bit loose. Team Marines, Ford, Robert Yates, and Doug Yates. God, dog, what a motor. I could waddle through the turns and shoot down the straightaway. All these guys down there. Just... <laughs> Remember the dog. Oh, hi, Coco. Yeah. Happy Mother's Day. Yeah. yeah, happy Mother's Day. My wife, Winnebago Motor Homes. Everybody's been behind me this so long, man. I, this is great. I never thought I'd come to New Hampshire and <laughs> pick up a trophy here, but I damn sure take it. <laughs> Everybody kept rubbing your head for good luck, and it seemed like you had and needed that good luck today. I didn't want to be so cocky, but I knew we had the car to beat, man. This thing will cut through the center. All I get out, don't have here today is my dad. He's been behind me, kicking me a tail, keeping me straight. I love all y'all at home, and just a great job for all these guys. They deserve it. How special will this win be for him because you two are very close? This is, this, he's wasted a lot of money on me getting me to this spot, you know, and now that we're here, I give him like if he was here or whatever to see his trophy, and well, like I said, I just want to thank everybody that's been behind this team range and all the Marines that got around here and all these guys. This man right here. <laughs> <laughs> I tried to take it from you, didn't yeah. I? <laughs> they, uh, a team got rid of him last year, and I said that would be the downfall of that deal, and he come over here and it picked his whole deal up. Like I said, Rob Yates, everybody, we love you all. Thanks for everything. And you never lost your confidence today, having to battle back and battle back. That's these guys. Ronnie Smith kept talking to me on the radio, calming me down. Here we are. <laughs> Now, Stephanie, you were all tears. How did you hold your breath for those last 20 laps? I was ready to pee. <laughs> Guys are like, oh. Well, it's a special win, special day down here in Victory Lane. Dick? Welcome back to Loudoun, New Hampshire, where Bobby Hamilton Jr. has won the Bush 200 here on FX, presented by AT&T Unlimited. And there's a look at your top 10. Good solid run for Hank Parker Jr. Uh, started back in 14th, just kind of hung out in the top 10 all day long. And Jamie McMurray, who showed a lot of strength early in the race, finished his ninth. Wimmer, Sauter, Jeff Purvis, Ron Hornaday, and Ricky Hendrick all finished on the lead lap. Yeah, Hornaday really gave that 26 car, I think, a good run and a nice turnaround. And, you know, it's only coincidence that the two fellows who described our race last night were scarcely seen today on coverage. Nothing intentional. <laughs> Not at all. <laughs> <laughs> and thanks a lot to Hank Parker Jr. and Jeff Purvis for, for coming up and uh, helping out last night. There you see Jason Keller, 32nd, but you have to give his crew an attaboy. Continue to try to get that race car out there, but his 34 consecutive races of running at the end comes to an end here today at Loud. The point standings will take a tumble. Keller loses the point lead to Jack Spray. LaJoy, Riggs, McLaughlin, uh, Big move for McLaughlin from 8th to 5th. Kenny Wallace, Greg Biffle, Stacy Compton drops down. Bobby Hamilton Jr. from 10th to 9th. And Scott Wood. Great day for him. I really am proud of that young man because he didn't quit. He didn't let last week affect his effectiveness when he got to this racetrack. This week did a great job. 
16 races, 16 different winners. Congratulations, Bobby Hamilton, Jr., and happy Mother's Day, everybody.